Hi everybody, welcome to the home of Crybaby Performance. Uh, a lot of you have asked for this video, how do I set up my car? This is a Nervo G17. So the first step is basically take the hood off, which we have the hood off, we have the wheels off, and uh, we have this set up on the alignment blocks. So the first thing you do is you bolt these alignment blocks. They're marked like that says which corner it goes in. And then we have the back one on as well. And then this is the alignment bar for the back. And there really is a procedure to doing this. You know, you have to get everything kind of done in a certain order or it'll take more time. So the first thing we did was we got our tires all situated of what we're gonna run. We got the air pressures. It's very important to have the air pressures. And the next thing is we looked at our shocks. We checked the air pressure on our shocks. We, that's the ride height from the last race, which that looks pretty good. Uh, this one in the right rear is also very good. And if you noticed, we have a little system going with our shocks and springs. I can tell you exactly what that shock and spring is just by the color on it and the two dots there. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but they all mean something. That could be 100 spring, 125, 132. And again here, that O-ring is at the exact where we want it. And this is the last one which that one's a little high. We may make an, a bit of an adjustment, I'm not sure. On this side of the car, we're not running the uh, valving that is adjustable with air. We only run that on the right side. And then we've got our caster and camber blocks here and our steering. So where we start is, we start at the back of the car here first, and we wanna make sure this axle is square. I have the right angle piece. So there's a couple of places to check to make sure that it's square. These cars will move around a little bit. Every time we adjust one of these cars after a race weekend, we come back here, we tear it all apart, and we check it, and it's amazing how things will be off a 16th or an 8th here and there, even though everything was tightened down, you weren't in any wrecks, it was a smooth weekend. They just seem to move around ever so slightly. Oh, I need the longer one. Give me that other aluminum block. So with any 90 degree angle item, we can check that. We're checking to make sure the axle is square, and it is. And then we're going to go to the other side and check this bird cage as well. And. That one is also very good. So that's really good. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab the tape measure. We're gonna check this measurement here. So from this bar, from this bar to the block, we have five and, what does that say? Five and an eighth, exactly. So now we're gonna to go to the other side of the car and we're not actually gonna do it, but the same thing, we're gonna measure from this point to here to get five and an eighth to make sure that's equal. If that's not equal, then we have to start turning on these radius rods. If we start turning on these radius rods, if we do it equal, it will drag it in or out. Uh, if you do it unequal, it will start to tilt the bird, bird cage. So the other adjustment here is um, for your car to be loose, or I'm, I'm sorry, tight, it's in the upper holes to loosen it up. You keep on moving it in, 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 in. If you want to turn this bird cage clockwise or counterclockwise, you can move this up or down in the holes as well. So on the other side here, these big long radius rods are what control the axle there. So we typically don't change that. We always run it at zero on this particular car, which is animal. And um, on the Honda car, we run it a little bit differently, but on this car, we always run it square. We call that square. On our setup sheet right here, 
that is right there, except I got to change the number from five and a quarter to five and an eighth, and we're running at uh, 90 degrees. So it's also good to have one of these setup sheets. This is, a, I believe, a CSI sheet, and I record this stuff before every single race so that we know where we started, where we ended, and then I can make a sheet so next time we go back to that track, I have all the same information all over again because these car setups will change more than you think in a race weekend. Okay, so we'll be right back with the, um, the front front uh, stuff we're gonna do next, so be right back. We are now working on the front end of the car. So as you can see, this is a floating axle. There's two radius rods on this side. There's another radius rod on the other side. There's kind of a lot going on here when you really look at it because this is a floating axle. The shocks are doing the work and the radius rods are keeping it all in place. So the first thing we do is we put it on these setup blocks and then we put this bar in here. With that bar on both wheels, it's locked the steering. The problem with that bar is sometimes it's not all that accurate. On these Nervo cars, you want the steering column to be exactly between the two nuts and the two plates. So that's exactly where we have it. And then over here, we, you can shift the axle to the right and the left with the front panhard bar. So right now we have the Panhar bar in the center location, which we normally have it. And then Nervo calls out, I think, eight and a half for the front um, distance from the panel. Let's see if I can zoom in here. And we're about eight, what are we at, eight and three eighths? Yep. We're at eight and three eighths, and um, we may go to eight and a quarter. Austin seems to like it uh, at about eight and a quarter. So then also we're going to talk about uh, the caster. This is the caster block right here. And if you look at it, we call that the one with the dot is zero, and we call that two ticks back. So we like ours to be two tick back, and then the other side will be zero. It will be right on the dot. Okay, and then for the camber, here's another one. This is how you adjust the camber. Right here with this block, it's got little numbers on it. Like, it's hard to read, but that says number three. This side says number two. There's one, two, three, four. And then there are slots that you can put it in. So we're calling that one slot over, and that's number three. So that'd be one and three. So, but we really want three degrees. So the thing that I have to say here is these blocks are never that accurate. So if you say that's one and three, one slot three, and you go to your other car, it's going to be two, two or one, four, or it's never going to be the same number. I've messed around with this for hours, never comes out right. It must be how they machine this little block. So the more accurate way to do it is... Can you grab me the little, uh, there's a little, uh, you can take this spindle, you can take this spindle off, or you can, right next to your block, let's see if this, here is a digital angle, angle gauge, and you put it right against the block, just for the heck of it, we'll turn it on, and we got to zero it. Let's see what it ends up being. Okay, there's zero. 2.7, so we could adjust that to three. Okay, so that's how you do that. You measure it from there, or you can plop this on the bare spindle, and you can see where the spindle is. So we like to do it right there. 2.6, it was 2.7 a second ago, and the other side should be zero. So that's how you check that. Do not do it by, yeah, these blocks are great for the adjustment. You can make the fine, finest adjustment, and then you can tune it in again. Generally, once we find that three degrees, 
We never change that. That dimension is solid for the life of the car unless the car gets hit and we have to readjust some. And the other side is zero. So that takes care of camber and caster. Um, we measured the distance from there to this panel. Now all these, all these dimensions are on Nervo's uh, website. So you can go right there and print out the sheet for your car. So the other thing is, if we wanted to move this axle right or left, we would take this bar, we'd loosen the nuts, and we could move it in or out. The other thing with the steering, we like to, if, it, if the bar fits in here good, it's good. But we like to take these longer bars like this, and we like to measure from this side to this side to get it perfectly dialed in. And then we will loosen these um, steering rods and we will make that adjustment on the front steering. So let's see, what did I, what did I forget? There's the other radius rod on this side. There's only one on this side. And each of these cars is different. So I would not watch this if I had a Stanley or a Bull Rider and say, oh, I got to set this up like this. Every manufacturer has a setup sheet for their car and that's the setup sheet you should be following. And you should always start with a baseline setup and then start making adjustments from there. Okay, we're going to go on to the next step in a second. Okay, one thing I forgot on here is we want to check the placement of the axle. So if we take this tool and we put it in place right there, we can check. Let's see, I can get it on this side. We can check where the axle is. Okay, because we want the axle to be square. Now the other thing we can do is we can take this upper radius rod and we can tighten it or loosen it to tilt the axle forward or back. If we tilt the axle forward, it makes it easy to steer. It's like power steering. If we tilt the axle back, it's harder to steer. So if we're running on dirt and the track is real slippery, I will tilt that axle back because I want to make it harder to steer. But if we're racing on asphalt and it's super grippy, I may tilt that axle forward to make it easier to steer. And when I say tilt it forward, we may only put two turns, two turns in the upper rod or take two turns out. So that will make your steering much easier to easier or harder. So a lot of young drivers, we like to make it a lot harder to steer. Because if, if you make it too easy, then they kind of move the wheel all over the place. If you make it harder to steer, it steadies their hands and it makes their line a lot better. Okay, we're going to go out to check the, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? Uh, the wheelbase next, the lead. Okay, we're on the wheelbase or lead. So we have a tape measure. I've got it taped in place over here. And on this side of the car, we're at 48 and 7 eighths, you can see. And then the other side of the car, we're at 47 and 7 eighths. So we're at one inch. So uh, again, the NC chassis for the G17, I believe they call out a half inch of lead, but we've never liked a half inch of lead. We've always liked it to be more. So what that's doing is, that's pushing the car to go more in a circle. So how you adjust the lead for your driver is, when the driver's going around in the circle and he has to jerk the wheel right or jerk the wheel left, then your lead is off. If you watch some of the drivers, some of the better setups, the kids' hands don't look like they're moving at all. The car is just going in a perfect circle. Their hands aren't moving on the steering wheel, and that's lead. So you have to figure that out. So what you do is, like the steering wheels have these orange marks on them, so you either have to watch your driver or you have to put a zip tie or an orange piece of tape on the steering wheel and watch him as he goes around to see how much his hands are moving or how smooth his line is. And then you can adjust the lead. This is one of my favorite adjustments to make because it really fine tunes the car and then you're going in a perfect circle. So again, you can adjust the lead in and out by these radius rods. 
We never typically, after we square up the axle, you could adjust the lead by the rear radius rods too. We never touch those. We always adjust it from this side or the other side um, to get our lead honed in. And again, we like to run about three quarters to one inch on these cars. So I'm not trying to think of what else I forgot to tell you. I think that's about it. Um, we're gonna get the wheels and tires put back on this thing and go on to the next step, which is gonna be cross, but we need a driver to do our cross. Some people do cross without a driver. I always prefer to do it with a driver. The driver should have to uh, help you guys work on the cars, get to know all the adjustments, because the driver's gonna be the one driving it. If they understand the adjustments and what to make on the car, then they can help you so you can make those adjustments for your driver. We're at our final step here. We have the tires and wheels back on and our last step is to scale the car and adjust the ride height. So we're gonna adjust the ride heights first, see where the scale is, and then we're going to adjust cross from there. So on the back here, um, Nervo gives us these ride heights right here, five eighths, three quarters, one and a quarter, one and three eighths. So that's what we're trying to achieve in the back here. We have one and three eighths, so we're perfect there. Now we're gonna to go to the next corner over here. And it's gonna lose you because I'm not there. One and a quarter, that's perfect. It's to the bottom of the bar, not to the bottom of the floor pan bottom of the floor pan can get all bent up so we always go to the bottom of the bar now at the next we always measure from the bottom of the floor plant pan bar that's the bar that's straight and again it's not going to lose in so we want to be at five eighths we're right about at five eighths a titch higher and then the back one is gonna be three quarters. And we're right there at three quarters. Okay, so then we go over here, we're gonna to check to see if what our cross is. There's our cross, 54.2. And um, our total weight is 342. In this class, the minimum is 340. We don't have any fuel in the car. That'll be worth two pounds. And then you can see the difference between our right side, front, left, all that. But the most important number is the 54% cross. Nerva likes to start at 55. We like to start at 53 and a half usually, but 54 is good enough. And if we had to adjust the cross, what we would do is we would, we would turn this out and then we would turn this one out and then we come back and turn this one in and the other front one in. So that's how you address cross. It's actually cross sides of the car. If you adjust only the right side, both the right and left front equal amount like one turn, it will not affect cross. And the same on the left side. If you if you do both left sides the equal amount, it will not affect cross. So if your ride heights are too low on one side, you can put a half turn in on just one side or a full turn in on one side and it will not affect the cross of the vehicle. But again, you need the driver to be able to do the cross and our driver is finally home from school and you had to make sure that you are to wait. Our drivers lost a little weight, so we had to add weight in the car. It has to be taped up, it has to have your name on it. We write on it how much it weighs, so we know how much we're adding. And we usually add most of the weight into the side pod right there. So this concludes our setup on this vehicle, and we are ready to uh, run. Hopefully you enjoyed our video and give it a thumbs up from the home of Crybaby Performance.